So like, you know, I know what it's like to definitely have that 1.5 GPA and not sure where you're going to be at. Um, but what I tell the students, it's never how you start. It's always how you finish. Hi, welcome to another episode of the hashtag Proud to be LBOCD podcast. I'm your host, Izzy, and today our guest is Rio Medina, who is the Career Pathways Coordinator for the Early College Initiative Program at LBCC. Today, she'll be talking to us about what the early college model is. So, thank you for being here today. Hi, Izzy. Yeah, so how about you start off by talking to us a little bit about uh, what you do in your position um, for the Early College Initiative. Yes, thank you so much for having mm -hmm. me here. We're really excited. Uh, so, yes, so I shake all your hands with a very good heart. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. Um, Low-key, I think my first official podcast. Um, and so I support the Office of Early College Initiatives. Um, I've been at Long Beach City College for over six years, mm -hmm. um, so I've been able to really see the growth and the development of the office kind of hands down what we do in one short sentence is we provide free early college opportunities um, to all types of students before they graduate high school. Uh, so we have four major initiatives. We have two specialized dual enrollment programs. One of them is specific for Long Beach Unified. And the reason why it's special is because a lot of the classes are geared towards career opportunities. Um, so a lot of the classes have like stackable credentials, uh, industry certificates the students can achieve within one semester or a couple of semesters. Um, and then we also have an open-ended dual enrollment program, which is individual dual enrollment, where any student from any district can take classes on the class schedule. So it really provides an open menu of opportunity. Um, and so then the other two are definitely really specialized. One of them is our early college at Browning High School, which we're really excited about. Um, so this is an opportunity Browning High School students in the culinary and hospitality pathway get to uh, start in the ninth grade and they get to take general education classes, graduation uh, high school requirement classes, and then also uh, major requirement classes for the culinary and hospitality. And so hopefully our goal is that they'll graduate with the high school school diploma and an associate's degree in culinary and hospitality. Um, and then our last big initiative is our high school articulation and credit by exam. So um, for all my Project Lead the Way folks out there, um, it's also our, uh, I believe it's medical occupations and terminology. And then we work with a couple of other districts. So we're doing a lot of different things. Um, we support over 1,500 students on a semester basis. Um, so an estimated over 2,000 students annually. Uh, we've seen a dramatic, dramatic increase in the opportunities for students um, and also students participating in our programs. And so, yeah, I oversee the daily operations of the office. Um, I also do all the marketing for our office. Um, so shout out to Mr. Dragu, my ninth grade graphic designer teacher who really <laughs> uh, showed me what it meant to uh, do the basics of graphic design. Um, I also support all the coordinating efforts, all the outreach opportunities. So anything you could really think of that's happening in our office, my hand has somehow been involved in it. <laughs> um, and then I also support the Office of Equity. So our office, I'm really excited about too. We've kind of gone under a rebranding. Uh, folks have heard us as like Career Pathways, the Dual Enrollment Office. Uh, so we're officially the Office of Curly Co Early College Initiatives. And then um, we're housed under the Student Services Division, specifically under the Office of Equity. And so I also serve as the co-chair for the Native American Indigenous Collaborative. Um, and then I also serve as a co-advisor for Siembra, which is our Latinx student org on campus. So I'm really active both within that early college component, but then also as the students uh, matriculate inward into the campus as well. Yeah. What don't you do at LBCC? Oh, man. I know, right? Like, that's what <laughs> one of my friends reached out to me this weekend. They're like, you're doing a lot, Rio. And I'm like, yeah, but I find some self-care. I'm a big yeah. believer in self-care. So, if, so yeah. So if I don't answer my text message on a Sunday, everybody knows why. <laughs> yeah. And so on the topic of the early college initiative, yeah. um, you talked about, you know, the culinary, but are there, are there other careers or specific fields that those kind of aim towards or, you know, specific? Specialized. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I think all of our dual enrollment opportunities provide um, course sequencing. That's what we like to call it, um, or pathway models. And so students at any point in their dual enrollment experience can meet with one of our ECI counselors. And the cool thing about our counselors is like, for instance, um, shout out to David Bruel. He is a former dual enrollment student and now he's a you know part-time adjunct counselor with us. So he brings in that experience of that dual enrollment experience and then helps students identify course sequencing. So that's 
that's one way. Um, for ECPP, we offer a wide range of different pathways. So anything from art and entertainment um, to advanced manufacturing to the health pathway. So if you take these classes, you're basically acquiring major requirements. Um, and then we also have our cybersecurity pathway, cloud computing pathway, and then also we just about to launch our teacher preparation pathway. And these are specific pathways where students can take a series of classes and then um, be able to acquire either certificate opportunities or industry certs, um, as well as exposure to the industry through different types of internships, because that's another area that we also provide is work-based learning. Okay. Yeah. So can any student get involved in, you know, I think they, if they have an idea of what they want to get involved in, is there sure. a certain academic requirement, you know, GPA, um, age? Yeah. Um, so I think the most important thing to know is because we're now office, you know, we're housed in the Office of Equity, uh, we're a part of a big regional team and statewide team when it talks about like dual enrollment. And so we are very fortunate at Long Beach City College. There is no GPA requirement to participate. Uh, we do ask that students participate. If they do in dual enrollment, they maintain a GPA of a 2.0 at Long Beach City College. Again, just to make sure that they're a steady student. Um, but as far as to enter into the program, there's no GPA requirement. Mm -hmm. uh, we are opening some of our programming to middle schools. We're still that's still very much in a development because having a fifth grader take geometry at yeah. LBCC <laughs> has been a very interesting initiative. Um, so we really encourage our ninth through 12th grade students to participate. Um, and then for our middle school students, we just want to make sure that you're checking in with your middle school sites um, and your counselors uh, to let them know that they're all informed of the process. But yeah, any student from any grade uh, from any district can participate in our opportunities. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so if a student is interested in these programs, where can they go to sign up and, you know, how can they apply and things yeah, like that? Yeah, for sure. I love it. So I think the best place to do that is to definitely check out our website. We've done another, like I said, we went under this kind of new branding and we've done an overhaul of our website. Uh, so www.lbcc.edu backslash early college <laughs> uh you know you just type that in you could literally type in early college initiatives in google and our office will pop up i think you have to add lbcc obviously to it mm -hmm. um but <laughs> it definitely that's kind of our first place of contact we have a virtual help desk we have a phone line and we also have a general email uh which is early college at lbcc.edu and literally any one of our team members has access to it um so any type of inquiry either it's our intern shout out to pre um, and or one of our team members can answer. I was just answering phones earlier today, yeah. so it might be me. <laughs> and then you were talking about internships, and I think that's mm -hmm. really important too, like work-based learning. Def. Um, and so when you're a part of the early college initiative, is there like a requirement that you need to have been in the program for a year or a semester? Or how would that. that work? You know, the internships in relation to being a part of the program? Yeah. So I'm doing a lot of shout outs. So shout out to Pam, oh. our workforce <laughs> development specialist. Um, so she just is a recent hire about a year ago. So initially, we didn't really have that opportunity to really engage students into the industry and get them paid internships. Now, with the grace of Miss Pam LaRose, she, we've been able to really establish great industry partners. Um, as well as a partnership with Pacific Gateway. So there is no requirement. We do highly encourage students to take dual enrollment classes and an internship. Uh, the reason why we say that is just research is telling us that students have a more enlightened experience, mm -hmm. a more empowered experience because they're getting that technical training in the classroom and then they're able to utilize it um, in the workforce. But no, that for our internships, um, it's also kind of like our outreach tool. So we're like, hey, if you're not really interested in dual <laughs> enrollment or if dual enrollment it's a little like funky mm -hmm. for you like start maybe with an internship um the other thing that miss pam does offer for our long beach unified students is uh where she's able to provide a uh, resume support interview support she just put me on on uh, informational interviews so i don't know if you've ever heard of those um so where a student can actually like meet with an industry person and not necessarily interview for a job but be able to ask questions as if they were wanting to get a job, but more of like just a perspective. Like so job shadowing, students are usually in the background, not being able to really ask questions because they're like just shadowing. Um, this inter informational interview would be able to actually get those questions um, in front of the industry partner. So that's kind of mm -hmm. cool. So yeah, yeah, so she can also help with all of that. Um, and so we're working to be able to have that information on our website, uh, but you can contact our office and we can refer you from that as well. Okay, and mm -hmm. then you're also talking about support and I think that's so important also yeah. in your success yeah. um, at LBCC. And For so sure. how accessible 
possible is the support? Can they just reach out to a counselor? Where would they go for support? So like talk about holistic, right? <laughs> Wraparound <laughs> services. That's what we call it in education. Um, yeah. So uh, ECI is definitely big on those wraparound services. We find out that, um, you know, a lot of the students, while they may be interested in dual enrollment, they may also be first time, you know, first generation students, the first in their family, they're first in their family to ever even take a college class while still being in high school. Um, so we provide a lot of different types of services. So we talked about our counselors, um, our academic counselors can provide that educational planning. We got interns um, who can also provide wraparound support. So folks who participate in ECPP, we actually do a, like a very strategic case management where we make sure we have the students' data information, we're contacting them. Um, but any student who reaches out, because they are an LBCC student, they have access to everything from our tutoring services, our mental health resources, um, where students can get free psychological services while they're still in high school, which I think is really important because yeah. sometimes mental health access is not always accessible. Um, they can hang out with our student union. We're starting to try out a dual enrollment student org. Ooh. So it's like LBCC student org representation, mm -hmm. making sure that students who are in dual enrollment get also a part of that student life piece, um, which we think that that's also a big part of our sense of belonging. Um, and then at the end of the day, right, contact our office and one of our team members can definitely assist you with anything you can think of. Um, we're also very supportive of our parents and guardians mm -hmm. <laughs> because we know that our parents and guardians um, and just like our staff members, you know, they you, they are really leading the charge when it comes to supporting our students um, when we don't have access to them. So we also can help uh, parents and guardians get more informed. We've had parents and guardians actually start classes with their students. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Yeah. And I think it's so important, too, that you're not only supporting uh, supporting, you know, your students, but the right. families as well. And you're encouraging to, you know, get that support. Um, so I think that's, I just want to applaud you on that. Cause oh, I think for you. a lot of high school students, especially, you know, in addition to taking on high yeah. school, you know, you're tackling college at the same time. So for sure. I Not to mention really all great. the family issues or community things that might be happening. Right. So mm -hmm. we're like very mindful of that. I myself yeah. am a first generation student born and raised here in Southeast LA. So I'm very mindful of what my experience was. I tell students I was a hot mess in high school. <laughs> um, yeah. So like, you know, I know what it's like to definitely have that 1.5 GPA and not sure where you're going to be at. Um, but what I tell the students, it's never how you start. It's always how you finish. Yeah. I think that's, oh, that's such a good like little quote to live your life by you literally know? um so and also about the early college model so what are the classes look like um is it online um uh, on campus can you can you choose you know what does that look like yeah so i mean right you're a college student so that's definitely exactly that piece you get to kind of choose what we call the modality of the class uh so with dual enrollment and through even our specialized dual enrollment ecpp uh, we offer a wide range of modality because we know not everybody's ready to get out of the pandemic mode yeah. uh so we offer hybrid classes which is an opportunity for students to take classes in person and then also have a portion done via Zoom or through Canvas. Uh, we have completely asynchronous classes, meaning you never step foot on our campus. You log into Canvas the whole time um, and there's no set dates or times that you have to enter into Canvas. Synchronous classes are those ones where you have to actually um, sign in at a certain day and time. Um, and then we have in-person classes. So we have all the range of modalities available to students. Yeah. Yeah. And so you're talking about choice and being a college student. Mm -hmm. Do you also get to choose the classes that you're taking? Love that. Yes. So we are very unique in that dual enrollment model. A lot of other community colleges in our local area have set classes that students can't take. Um, I think there is a beauty and a beast to having an open schedule. <laughs> yeah. um, so while an open schedule can really amplify a student's options and opportunities. So yes, any student from any grade level um, in the local area can definitely take one of our classes. Um, but we also want everybody to be mindful and strategic because I think we're also combating against a community college model where, you know, the stigma, if you go to community, you're not going to end up getting out, right? It's definitely wanting to be a lot strategic. So that's why we really encourage, especially first-time dual enrollment students, um, if they're not participating in ECPP, uh, because those classes are core sequence, so you'll know they'll count towards something, um, to meet with one of our counselors beforehand.
Okay. Meet with our counselor and then get a plan. And so students can even get an education plan if they really, yeah, if they really wanted to. Okay. And then for LBUSD students, mm-hmm. is there um, enrollment fees for ECPP or individual dual enrollment? How does that Free work? 99. <laughs> that's it. So all dual enrollment classes are completely for free. Depending on what path you take, the students may be eligible um, to also receive a waived health fee, which is $20, and also a free textbook. Uh, so yeah, we definitely have deadlines when it comes to that. Um, but in regards to other fees, uh, health fees, $20. So if you do individual dual enrollment, you're responsible for the health fee and any textbook cost. Okay. Yeah, but the class is for free. Okay. And then from your perspective, what mm-hmm. do you hope that students can get out of this opportunity? Oh, uh, it's like kind of like a loaded question, but yeah. a simple question at the same time. Um, my hope and dream is to be honest with you and talking to all these wonderful young people that are listening, um, you know, is to really take a chance on yourself. I want everybody, especially the ones who never really thought about college, who thought like, I kind of know what I want to do, but I don't know what I want to do. We call them the middle students. We kind them, you know, they're not at the far end. I was on the far, far end of failing out of school. Um, And even for those students to know that like taking a class where you learn how to study, right, changed my life in a lot of different ways. Learning the basic concepts of like what even is higher education. We have classes like that. Or taking a class where you're able to actually get something like a certificate so you can go into the workforce. So I really hope that folks believe in themselves and give themselves a chance to really um, take a chance on themselves. And then also know that like this is creating a bigger impact when we talk about like social justice, economic mobility. um, This is where folks are saying that students have a higher probability of graduating high school. Uh, Folks have a higher probability of being able to see some type of economic mobility because they're just more focused. They've taken classes way earlier on. So the cost is gone. Um, So yeah, so I say to the students, take a chance on yourself. I believe in you. We believe in you. Um, And just to know that you have a place at LBCC. And I think even if, you, if you're if you still kind of hesitant, you're, like you said, you're going to have so much support. Right. And, you know, if you're struggling, you can have that academic support, that For mental sure. support, you know, economic support. So I think it, I think it's important to, like, push yourself out of your comfort zone a little bit, even though it's yeah. really scary. Because even if it is, like, in the middle, you, you're, you don't realize until after it's done, like, wow, like, I did this, this, and this. Yeah, you know? like, totally. And so I think one of the other things that we talk about in our office is, like, um, in the industry, they call them technical skills. So these are skills that you learn, like, through classes, right, technical information. And then there's things called soft skills. And soft skills are so vital. It's, like, being able to hold a conversation, yeah. right, <laughs> um, being able to answer an email, being able to show up. And so I tell people, I work with industry members like Netflix, Microsoft, Homeland Security, um, to be able to create partnerships. And the one thing that they're telling me is like, one, we want your student. Two, we want the student that historically has not been able to get access to us. And then three, we want a student who we know that they're going to do well because they're just showing up to class, which means that that can be transferred over to showing up to work. Yeah. Right. (laughs) So it's like to know that like all these skills, I think, had I understand that a lot earlier on, that everything that I went through and all my skills that I needed to know and learn were totally transferable. Like my resiliency is something that I transfer into everything that I do at work. So, Mm -hmm. you know, just to know that it's very transferable, like showing up and talking to your professor means that you could probably show up and talk to your boss eventually one day, right? Yeah, not only are you learning academically, but you're learning and building all of these skills outside of the classroom. Exactly. That's great. Yeah. Um, And so my last question for you is, do you have any advice going, you know, Any advice for students going into the um, LBCC dual enrollment ECPP program? Yeah, for sure. One, first and foremost, contact our office. Do not hesitate to contact our office. I feel very proud of the team that I work with where we're answering the phones (laughs) in some places, right? And other colleges and universities um, is a little bit limited, but we answer. Yeah, we definitely are very mindful of answering our phones. Our emails, our office is located at the PCC campus um, in AA109. And so if anybody even just wants to drop by in person, um, so definitely ask questions, uh, get the resources and feedback that you're needing, because that's one of the biggest components of students not accessing education is just basic awareness. Um, We have folks that can translate. So to know that hopefully language barriers can also be kind of um, lowered for that as well. Um, And then the other thing that I would say is like be very proactive 
proactive rather than reactive. If you decide to take a chance on yourself, which we really hope that you do, um, and take these classes with us, I tell everybody at the moment of you feeling funky, um, check in with our office. We might be able to provide some type of proactive resource. Maybe it's like a mental health resource. Maybe it's an economic resource. Maybe it's just like telling you that you can do it. And mm -hmm. like, we really want to see you further through it. Right. Um, I think it's that's the other thing is like we coming out of this pandemic, a lot of our young people um, have a hesitancy to speak out and speak up. And so we really encourage you to do that sooner rather than later, um, because just to know that you will be supported and we want to make sure that you're as successful as possible. Yeah. And on that note, those were all the questions that I had for you. But I want to thank you so much for being here yeah. and sharing your information with us. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Cool. Cool.